Welcome to this Tutor to You Sociology topic video looking at work, poverty and welfare, focusing on measures of poverty. There are several different measures of poverty that return very different results and provide a variable picture of poverty in the UK. In this video, we're going to examine five different types of measures listed on the screen. And these are based upon differing definitions of poverty. And in our previous video in this series, we examined some of these definitions. The first measure to consider is the official poverty line, an objective measure used in official government statistics. Secondly, the minimum income, a measure that looks at how much individuals and families need to earn in order to achieve an acceptable standard of living. Thirdly, the budget standard measure, based on the cost of a series of items that families would ordinarily buy. A fourth measure is the Townsend Deprivation Index, that is based upon relative deprivation comparing the ability of individuals to attain certain goods and services. Finally, we'll examine some of the social exclusion measures, an important yet often hidden aspect of poverty, whereby an individual's economic situation influences their ability to function in society. Firstly, the official poverty line. This measure is based upon households earning less than 60% of the UK median income which in 2021 was £31,700 per person. The median income is used as a more reliable measure than the average or mean income, as there are statistical outliers with the top 10% of the UK population having 44% of the UK's wealth, whilst the bottom 50% control just 9% according to the Equality Trust. This means that an individual earning less than £19,000 a year is technically in poverty according to this measure. This figure varies for households with more than one adult. The figure is published in an annual survey published by the government called the Households Below Average Income Survey, and in 2020 it was estimated that one in five households in the UK were living in poverty, with 3.2 million children affected. However, the figure may be higher, as basing it on income alone does not take into account regional variations across the UK such as higher housing and food costs in London or more expensive transport in the north of England. And so while it provides a snapshot, it doesn't always accurately reflect the scale of poverty. For example, rapid changes to gas and electricity prices in 2022 will impact on the disposable income that individuals have. While if wages remain stagnant or below inflation, then this will not be reflected until the following year. The minimum income measure is an objective measure that is based upon the average outgoings of an individual or family and suggests an income that is required for that household to achieve a decent standard of living. Using data from the Joseph Roundtree Foundation, this figure is estimated to be £325 per week for a single person living outside of London and almost £800 a week for a family of two adults and two children. The figures are slightly inflated by between £100 and £200 a week for those living in inner and outer London, which accounts for higher costs of property. Whilst this measure looks at the amount needed for a decent standard of living and takes into account costs, these may still vary based upon the personal debt, interest rates and the types of property and working patterns of individuals. So while it gives a reasonable guideline, this may not accurately reflect the costs associated with a decent standard of living. Furthermore, rapid change in circumstances from rising inflation to home repairs may lead individuals to need higher incomes to cover these costs, regardless of how well they budget. A third measure that is similar to the minimum income measure is the budget standard measure. This measure, devised by Bradshaw, measures the cost of commonly acquired items. The budget measure includes items that will satisfy the needs of a family's individual and collective needs and includes social and cultural events, leisure and other aspects of ordinary life that some sociologists would suggest should be sacrificed when in poverty. This measure is based upon the price in retail outlets and so can be seen to be a fair reflection of the cost of living. If families cannot afford these items, then this marks them out as being below the poverty line. A benefit of this measure is that as prices increase, so does the threshold for measuring poverty, 
meaning that it is a more accurate reflection of the costs associated with ordinary day-to-day -day life. However, the cost of accessing some goods and services may be higher for those with lower incomes, with the cost of credit for goods such as televisions and white goods often higher for those with less money, compared to those that can either afford to buy them outright or obtain lower rates of interest. Furthermore, retail prices may reflect out-of-town shopping centres where prices are cheaper than inner-city small retailers, where individuals pay a premium for the convenience of shopping locally. And as such, the budget standard measure does not always reflect the price that individuals pay, particularly those with less economic stability. The measure often used by sociologists and social researchers when examining poverty is the Townsend Deprivation Index. Based upon Townsend's original research in 1979, it comprises a list of over 60 measurements that are commonly held to be essential social, cultural and economic activities. From these 60, Townsend selected 12 activities and scored respondents based upon whether they engaged in the activity or owned a good. This provided a quantitative overview of levels of deprivation across three cities in its initial research, but this has been expanded in the 21st century. In his initial research, Townsend concluded that 22% of households suffered from deprivation, which is similar to rates recorded for other measures. Since the inception of the Townsend Deprivation Index, analysis has been undertaken on UK census data to score different areas of the UK, breaking it down into different constituencies and even wards. In the most recent analysis of 2011 data by Yusuf and Boll, it showed the most deprived area in the UK was Tower Hamlets in London, part of a trend that demonstrated higher levels of deprivation in inner London, particularly amongst areas that were ethnically diverse. Conversely, the least deprived area was South Northamptonshire, while Townsend's initial research was criticised for focusing on subjective measures of deprivation, the more recent usage of census data allows this to be a more objective measure of deprivation in the UK. The further measure of poverty was introduced by Mack and Lansley in 1985. They adopted a more consensual approach to studying poverty and rated individuals based upon the most commonly held social and economic indicators of a decent standard of living. Like Townsend, they scored individuals based upon their ability to afford or engage in these activities, introducing elements of social exclusion. These included holidays and leisure activities, access to healthcare provision, quality of education and adequate housing. This measure was encompassed into the Poverty and Social Exclusion Survey, the most recent of which, in 2012, found that one in three households in the UK did not undertake a significant amount of the activities or own goods or use services that were perceived to be readily accessible by the majority of the population. Critics would suggest that this may be due to personal choice. However, it does demonstrate the differences in priorities between individuals and the extent to which those in poverty are not able to participate either in the social and cultural events of wider society or face barriers in doing so. Comparing the measures of poverty, it's difficult to obtain a consensus on the extent of poverty in the UK, given the differing tools used for measuring it. Bradshaw, creator of the budget standard model, conceded that multiple measures of poverty need to be considered when assessing the scale of poverty, and that quantitative data was insufficient on its own to assess the depth of the issues. The more subjective interpretations have also been criticised. Townsend in his initial study counted not eating meat as a sign of deprivation, yet in contemporary society it's a personal choice rather than a socially desirable trait. Finally, budget standard measures and social exclusion measures can be seen to be subject to rapid changes. Whilst once considered a luxury, smart technology is essential in today's society, as is internet access due to the changes in accessing benefits and healthcare. That concludes this Chief's Youth Sociology topic video on work poverty and welfare, focusing on measuring poverty. Thanks for watching.